Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Advanced Projects for the Arduino with Earth People Technology. Today we will assemble the Analog Monitor Project for the Arduino Uno. This project will sample all six of the analog inputs of the Uno, store each sample in the EPT 570 AP board, transmit each sample to the PC, and display each of them in a Windows form. This is an advanced project, and you will need to complete a beginner's tutorial on Verilog and a beginner's tutorial on C Sharp before starting this project. However, you don't need advanced programming skills to complete the project. All of the steps are explained in detail, and all the coding concepts are designed for beginners and intermediates. So let's get started. As you can see on the screen, the analog monitor window has six individual monitor text boxes. Each show one of the analog inputs for the Arduino Uno. Each text box is independent of the rest. There are six independent power supplies, each connected to an analog input of the Uno. If I turn the voltage on the first supply up, you can see the voltage increase in the monitor one text box in increments of about 25 millivolts. This increment is due to the resolution of the power supply output. I turn it up to about 5 volts, which is the maximum input allowed on the Uno. Next I'll do the same thing. I'll turn the voltage down to 0 and then back up to 2.5 volts. So, as you can see, the voltage is sampled at the Arduino's analog input and displayed in the text box in real time. The same is true for all six analog inputs. Well, how does the analog monitor project take the digital samples and display them on screen? Next, we'll show you how to create all of the code to build the analog monitor project. This will include the Arduino C code, the CPLD Verilog code, and the Visual C Sharp code. To start this tutorial, you should go to ASICworld.com and read through their tutorial about Verilog. You don't need to become an expert on HDL, just get to know the basics. Also, you will need the basics of C Sharp and the .NET framework. Go to homeandlearn.co.uk for a great tutorial on C Sharp. Again, you don't need to become an expert. Just get the basics. We will be teaching you about the advanced part of these languages in the tutorial. The Analog Monitor Project requires several items which you will need to assemble before you get started. The equipment you will need is the EPT 570 APU2 board, the Arduino Uno board, a USB Type B cable, a USB Type Mini B cable, a 6 pin 100 mil mail header, a 10 pin 100 mil mail header, 1 to 6 5 volt DC power supplies, and the banana clip leads for these. The reason for 1 to 6 5 volt power supplies is that uh, we use 6 supplies in the, t in the tutorial. However, you can make do with one. We'll show you that trick at the end of the tutorial. We will need to install USB drivers so we can access our equipment. Uh, it's to get the Arduino working, just plug it in and go to the device manager and follow directions to install the USB driver. And with the EPT570 board, just plug it in, go to device manager, install it that way. Next up, we need to install the software. Just to make sure you install the Arduino wiring IDE, Fortis 2, and the Microsoft C Sharp Express. We will start the analog monitor project by designing a data flow diagram for each of the three sections of code the Arduino Uno code, the EPT 570AP code and the visual C-sharp code. The data flow diagram will provide a framework with which to write the code. 
the Arduino data flow starts with the setup function. Here we initialize the ports and variables. Next, the processor executes the instructions in the loop function. Here we will read the ADC channel 0. Set the digitized value on the port D and port B pins. Set the address of the channel to the port B pins. Assert the write enable, then repeat the code for the next channel. We'll continue to increment the channel, take the sample, and write it to the EPT-570AP until we reach channel 5. After channel 5, we'll reach the end of the loop. Here, the code will branch to the top of the loop and we'll start the process all over again. The data flow for the EPT-570AP starts with a wait loop. It waits for the start-stop control signal to be asserted from the control register. Once this happens, the data flow will fall into the wait loop for the write-enable signal to assert. When the write-enable signal asserts, the state machine leaves the idle state and enters the start transfer state. In this state, the end term address will be selected and the 10 bit digitized value is stored in a register. The state machine will immediately enter the first byte enable state and initiate the lower byte transfer across the USB. Next, the upper byte of the digitized value is transmitted across the USB. When the upper byte transfer is complete, the state machine goes back into the idle state. The data flow waits in a loop for the write enable to assert again and start the process all over again. The C sharp data flow on the PC starts with the initialization of variables, controls, events, and callbacks. The system registry is scanned for any uh, Earth People technology devices. Any devices that are found are added to the drop down combo box. The user must then select the available EPT device and click the open button. Next, the user will click the start button. This will set the start stop control bit of the control register high and send it to the CPLD. Once this signal is asserted, the CPLD will start to send the lower byte and the upper byte messages to the selected active host intern. When bytes are received, the callback function is called. This callback function will in turn call the transfer out receive function. In this function, the end term address is selected and the upper byte is stored into a local variable. The next time the transfer out receive function is called from the callback, the end term is selected and the lower byte is stored into the bottom eight bits of the local variable. At this point, the full digitized value is transferred from the CPLD end term and is ready for display. The text box is selected from the intern address and is updated with the collected digitized value. The cycle repeats for each digitized value transferred from the CPLD. So that covers the data flow. In part two, we'll go into the Arduino code and write it out and explain all the details. So stay tuned.